let's talk about Chuck as an influence uh, to you. Um, yeah. Now, would you say he's an influence to you as an animator more as as a director or or, or more vice versa? more more as a director? Definitely more. To me, uh, my number one. Uh, uh, childhood uh, love was Walt Disney, 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 Disney. I was totally a Disney nut. Yeah. And uh, um, I learned uh, later on in life that uh, it was not a, a saint that they tried to portray, that he could drink, he could smoke, he could swear, he could uh, be rough over, uh, on people. But, I mean, you have to look at uh, the fruits, what he left behind, you know. Yeah. So, even though Walt Disney was not a great artist, he had a great flair. He knew what was good, mm -hmm. uh, at least at least to a certain period, because now, of course, people uh, look at it uh, with different eyes. But there's still something that stays on for and will stay on for a very long time. So it definitely did something right in that regard. How were you? How did you? How were you able to access Disney um, as a child? Like, what was your your means of it? going to the theater, or was it? Well, uh, yeah, my parents had a good idea when I was very, very young. I must have been like four or five years old to take me to Sleeping Beauty. I had a cold and I was crying and I was sniffing and crying. And my aunt uh, had to take me halfway through the picture, take me home. And uh, But I remember the last shot that we saw was when the two, uh, Prince Charming and uh, Briar Rose, were dancing uh, in the woods. And that's a, a vivid memory. And after that, not long after that, uh, I had a chance to see Snow White, which haunted me for years and years. I love those dwarves. And also um, Pinocchio, of course, and oh, Bambi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in my in my personal opinion, the, you know, when people talk about the best Disney classics, people always go to Fantasia and I'm, I'm, I'm always a Pinocchio man. And to me, yeah. to me that, that shot, where it's Pinocchio's in a cage in Stromboli's, you know, yeah. chamber, and it's and it's thundering and lightning, and and everything is moving and shaking, and just to realize that that is nothing more than good old fashioned ink and paint, it yeah. blows my fucking mind. <laughs> I totally, no, no, totally agree with you. You're absolutely right. It's totally awesome, and that's but one, awesome. That's one yeah, scene not, in a whole movie of scenes like that. <laughs> no, I agree. Totally agree. Um, no, to me, it's the Rembrandt of animation. Yeah. Oh, that's a great way to say it. The Rembrandt of animation is Pinocchio. That's a great way to say it. That is my personal opinion. I, I would I would completely champion and agree that with that opinion. Um, but about Roger Rabbit, I mean, your scenes in Roger Rabbit are, are really, are really great. And there's, um, thank you. There's, thank some, you. there's something that, and also in the, uh, you did the, you did more in the shorts actually, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more. I mean, uh, animated also baby Herman and yeah. uh, some of the surgeons as well. Actually the gag when, uh, surgeons are about to cut open, uh, Roger Rabbit, uh, Rob Minkoff, the director, wanted to use a, a kitchen knife, a giant kitchen knife. And I said, why don't you use a chainsaw? Yeah. The and it's, <laughs> it, it, it's in the cartoon. So, yeah. So, you, so them using a chainsaw, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> yeah. And also there was a little gag, but uh, you really have to look for it uh, to notice it because it's very minor. It's uh, when the tunes uh, congregate in uh, the warehouse around the, rem the remains of uh, Judge Doom still smoking right. uh, you have all the characters uh, stopping around and at some point you have Bugs Bunny stopping and right behind him there's little uh, Tweety Bird who has to jump over Bugs foot in order to stop and see what's going on <laughs> so that was animated brilliantly by Andreas Deja everybody knows him and I, I suggested that gag to him and he animated it oh wow I don't think people really appreciate the the lack of quality that they're getting with overseas animation. Um, well, yeah, you know, there would be a lot to say about this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, and I, just to give you an example, for instance, uh, 
I saw uh, when I was at Disney, I was manager inside Disney for a short while uh, in character art, character art management. And um, I did uh, several visits to the Burbank studio because I was operating from Paris, but I, I traveled pretty much all over the world uh, at that time. And uh, what happened is uh, I was uh, visiting some, uh, some uh, I think it was a Disney TV at the time, and um, some uh, manager in charge of some uh, TV series at Disney Television uh, was uh, reviewing some new footage. I think it was uh, some DuckTales or something. Anyway, I, it just uh, kind of uh, bothered me that everything seemed so rushed in terms of the, the flow of action, the pace of the cartoon itself. And then I was told that it's because uh, managers were uh, okay approving uh, storyboards or animatics, but because they didn't know how to uh, imagine the thing moving, right. to them it was always too long. So they would see a panel, a still panel for three seconds, and they would say, it's too long, it's too long, cut it down, cut it down. So in effect, what happened, which was properly timed, had to be shortened just to please some ignorant uh, managers. Yeah. And the animators didn't have enough time, screen time, to actually develop the action.